Next up, we have Neil Dave uh, talking about opioid-induced constipation. A PQI that was actually written a, a few months ago, and it's, it should be uh, posted now on our website. But this was special because it was written by all the attendees of the PQI workshop. Um, and uh, we, well, everyone contributed to it, uh, as well as Julianne and myself. And so this is what we worked on at the spring forum, and we really knocked this out pretty quickly uh, in two 30-minute sessions, and we had a, pretty much a PQI ready to go. So I wanted to go over what we did uh, and uh, kind of show off this PQI. So first off, uh, you know, the PQIs have kind of a standard format. Uh, first part is the description of the PQI, and this was on opioid-induced constipation. <clears throat> and so it's relevant to all of our practices and all of our pharmacies. Um, you know, uh, patients are, a lot, of, a lot of our patients are on opioids, and um, we need to manage their constipation. So a little bit of background information. Um, we all kind of know this, but prevalence is, uh, is, is pretty high in our patient population. Um, and, you know, we need to be aware that this can affect patient's quality of life. And it can also lead to uh, other complications if we don't address it. So if we move on to the actual PQI process. So when you see a patient that gets a uh, prescription for an opioid, and th these are the parts of the PQI that we worked on um, together at the workshop. So the PQI process and, and going, going for the rest of the PQI. So the process that everyone came up with, we all came up together with the group is, you get a prescription for an opioid, uh, um, opioid medication. You uh, are able to look at the electronic medical record, look at the patient's chart, review if <clears throat> there's any, um, causative medications in addition to the opioid. Uh, look if the patient's on anything that causes diarrhea, like maybe they're also on Zolota. Uh, and there may not need, be a need to do anything at that point. So we want to first look at the chart and, and have a good review. Next, we want to uh, educate the patient on opioid induced constipation, uh, talk about symptoms. <coughs> um, you know, talk about straining, talk about their stool consistency, and just like their sensation of incomplete uh, evacuation. That's how they would tell that they are constipated. So the next part is um, educating, uh, educating them on medications they can take. You know, most everybody's using DocuSate and Senna, telling them how to take it. Uh, giving them the max dose. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we can add on. If that's not working, you know, we have other medications that, that are available. You know, Marilox is now is over the counter. Uh, Lactulose. Uh, we can also use max citrate. And, and lastly, uh, max citrate. Or even if we have to, go with some of the newer agents, Relistore. Vantic or uh, Amatiza. Some patient-centered activities. So, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of it. This is focused on uh, not, you know, we focus on drug therapy, but we can also uh, help patients with non-pharmacological treatment. And so, increasing fluids, increasing fiber, you know, trying to modify diet, <clears throat> um, increasing exercise or activity can help. Uh, there was a couple of comments on books that we should offer. In particular, there's one particularly mentioned called Eating Well Through Cancer. This one was, I believe this was provided by uh, a drug company, uh, and they, there's one practice that was handing it out to all their patients, uh, <clears throat> and at no charge uh, since it was provided, but even telling patients, if you don't have access to that book, even mentioning this book or another book that may help uh, was another recommendation. Uh, and then also taking preventative measures uh, uh, daily is the last thing we talked about. 
So for patient, so those are all the kind of like the non-pharmacological activities or the patient-centered activities we can do. When we're educating patients, you know, we want to make sure that they're aware of max doses of, of anything, if, if, of any medication. Uh, for Relisor specifically, um, since you can have a bowel movement almost instantaneously, we want to make sure that we can tell patients that, um, you know, just let patients know that that could happen so that they're, most people should take it really, you know, when they're close to a, close to a bathroom or maybe take it when they get home instead of right when they're at the clinic, uh, if they have to drive the long distance. We also included some references um, and, and that was about it. It, it really was a, a pretty good PQI that didn't take very long to do and we did it all as a group. Um, and so I, th I think it's hopefully helpful to, to everybody. And if you have any questions, does anybody have any questions on this PQI or any on PQIs in general? Oh, hi, this is uh, Anush Patel again uh, from uh, Bass and Cooperstown. Um, yes. uh, it was a nice brief overview. Any issue getting uh, Rally Store pre approved uh, um, for most of these patients? I, you know, it can be. Um, you know, it, it depends on the insurance, really. Uh, some insurance will require you to get this through um, the retail benefits. Sometimes they allow you to get it in the, in the clinic. It just, it really just depends. Um, ideally, you'd like for them to get it in the clinic. That way, you know, they, they, they took their dose. Okay. Um, it, it really just depends on the insurance. Okay, great, thanks. Hey, hey Neil, um, yeah. Mike Ref, um, and great job going over the PQI. And, and absolutely, for those that don't know, Neil is one of the chairs uh, for the positive quality intervention initiative doing a tremendous job and I know you touched upon touched upon the fact that this was a team effort and um, it just uh, really reflects the collaborative nature of the members of Encoda that um, through two you know sort of short workshops at our last meeting uh, you and the team uh, with the other leaders were able to, to put this together and uh, you know it's a real um, uh, issue with oncology, uh, opioid-induced constipation, and just a great example. And so thank you and the whole team that, that, that put it together. Great job. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. It was, um, it, it, it's, it's an issue that everybody, you know, deals with every day, and it's good to have something uh, documented on how to, you know, steps to, that we can use easily to help our patients. Thank you, Neil. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, um, if you do have a question and it comes up later, like just thought pops into your head, uh, feel free to type in the questions in the Q&A box, um, raise your hand or have a chat, um, type into the chat function, and then we'll follow up with you after the webinar.